I'm Joel Chasnoff, and welcome to FIDF Live. It may look like I'm in the middle of nowhere, but in fact, I'm on agricultural land belonging to one of the many kibbutzim here in the south of Israel, very close to the Gaza border. For the residents of the south along the border, the only way they can live in peace is because of IDF soldiers patrolling the border 24-7 against any and all threats. Today, we're going to get a close look at a very important concept in the IDF, Shiluv, the combination, the coordination of different aspects of the forces working together to keep all of Israel safe. The UAV operators who send information to troops on the ground in real time, the Madrichot Khir infantry instructors who train our combat soldiers for every mission, and of course, the combat soldiers themselves. Come with me. As the boots on the ground, our infantry soldiers must be ready for every type of warfare, including urban combat, where they are literally fighting in neighborhoods. They need to be able to maneuver and to handle any threat that might come at them. For this reason, infantry instructors, Madrichot Khir, play a very significant role. These women train our infantry soldiers to be efficient by acting as a team. And they do this by teaching each soldier what's called a miktsoa, a profession that he uses within the platoon. Today, we are going to meet these madrichot khir, the infantry instructors who play such a vital role here at the infantry school in the Negev. Sergeant Aya, thank you so much for joining us on this hot and windy day in the Negev Desert. Your soldiers have a huge exercise tonight. Tell us what is in store for them. My soldiers have been training for a month now. They've been here on a course, each one really gaining their specialty, the specific tools and the specific jobs that they're going to carry out for the rest of their time and the rest of their service. Um, tonight what we're going to do is really mimic a warlike scenario for them. Uh, they're going to be training all night in warlike conditions to really see um, and maximize their potential. That's a lot on your shoulders as well, obviously. How do you as an infantry instructor make sure that they are completely prepared? Personally for me it fills me up with a lot of pride knowing that what I do here is what's going to um, dictate the success of our forces out there in the real world, in the real scenarios. And I have to just say that obviously it, it does come with a lot of responsibility as you've mentioned, but it's something that all of the instructors here know and that's why we take all of the instruction that we do, all of the lessons, all of the ways in which we instruct our soldiers on their specific weapons in the most serious way possible. We're now with Lieutenant Colonel Gilad. He is the commanding officer of Itul the Hashmada, the Expose and Attack Training Unit. Lieutenant Gilad, thank you so much for spending time with us. I want to ask you, on the actual field of battle, what is the significance of the Expose and Attack Unit? In each scenario, whether it will be fighting and battle in Gaza, whether it will be fighting in Lebanon, the soldiers and the platoons of the Expose and Attack, and attack inside the companies, inside the battalion, are supposed to be before the fighting begins and to be able to observe, to recon and to put a fire against the enemies that are waiting for the IDF soldiers and the, war and the combat soldiers inside wherever the soldiers will be needed at. Today we're meeting the Madrichot Khir, the infantry instructors. Their job is very important. Tell me about them and what exactly they do. The responsibility and the job of the infantry instructors in the IDF is to give the best training and qualification to the infantry soldiers in order for them to be able to do their jobs based on weapons, based on fighting techniques, based on assets, aerial assets, ground assets, and whatever needed to the IDF in order to be able to complete these missions. The drill is going to take the platoon to give them to walk a little bit in order to simulate to the soldiers what they're going to be needed in battle. They're going to establish their position in front of the enemy, wherever it's going to be. They're going to put some observation uh, era and uh, anti-tank era and special weapons that we won't be able to speak about, speak about them today. But we are going to simulate them exactly how it's going to be 
uh, on battle in Gaza, Lebanon, wherever uh, needed. If I may, I want to ask about Operation Protective Edge in 2014, where you were a company commander. How did you bring your personal experience from Protective Edge to the school where you are now in charge of the training? Back in 2014, in the Operation Protective Edge, in a face-to-face -face combat with Hamas terrorists, I've lost uh, three of my soldiers and uh, 20 of them got wounded uh, back, back then. I think uh, despite the hard time that the company has been through over there, we were able to get operational achievements and to neutralize Hamas force that was facing us. All the lessons that I've learned in this hard battle, hard battles that were back then, I'm trying to establish them in the qualification and training that I'm holding in this uh, school. And eventually, I think that a good training, a good qualification will save many lives of the IDF soldiers in the next war. Sergeant Aya, can you give us an example of when your team actually implemented in training around the battlefield something you had taught them? The most recent and I think the most powerful example that I can give you right now is um, last month's Breaking Dawn operation where we really saw how the skills, the tools, the weaponry that we taught them how to use here um, was really implemented in a real-life war-like scenario and really showed the professionalism and the success of the instruction that we give them here. It's a busy day, we have fighter jets and tanks in the background, but you made some time for us on FIDF Live. Best of luck to you and your soldiers tonight. Todaraba. ערב טוב לכולם, מאחל לנו פה לכולם שיהיה פה תרגיל מלמד ומוצלח. This whole month has been hard, a lot of learning, a lot of training, but I feel ready. Mom, I miss you, first of all. Dad, I love you. I wish you guys were here to see me and follow my journey. But I hope you guys know that I'm doing this for you, and I love you guys so much. I'm Lieutenant E. I'm 24 years old. I serve at the 200 Squadron here at Palmachim Air Base. I'm a grandson of Holocaust survivors from Poland, Germany, and Hungary. I grew up in a family where we were raised on the values of family, friendship, and, and Zionism. My job at the squadron is divided by two. We have the aerial piece where we fly the planes on the daily routine. My ground job is to gather all the intelligence and prepare for the flights. What you see in front of me is a UAV, short for Unmanned Aerial Vehicle. It has very unique capabilities of staying in the air for long times, carrying out all sorts of missions, from gathering intelligence to working joint with the ground forces in the Navy, and even it has attack capabilities when it's needed. At Breaking Dawn Operation, our squadron played a leading role, helping to attack targets, to gather information, to help incriminate enemy hostiles, and to help clean targets before striking them to make sure no civilians were harmed. During the operation, in one of my flights, we were briefed on a strike. For several hours before the strike, we did the following. We looked at all the streets, next to the building. We saw people coming in and out. We wanted to make sure that there were only terrorists inside that building. And we have found that two hours before the strike, there were a group of kids playing soccer beneath the building. So we delayed the strike for about 
five to six hours later until they left. Then we successfully carried out the strike. Basically, our key goal is to minimize collateral damage. Knowing there were kids there, we felt the responsibility on our shoulders to postpone the strike to make sure no one got hurt. Unfortunately, the terrorists are using heavily populated areas to use human shields to carry out their strikes on us to make sure they don't get hurt. What we do is to make sure we minimize that collateral damage while still carrying out the missions, day in and day out. Let me tell you about my daily routine. Because we have flights 24-7, we have morning briefing and evening debriefing, where the whole squadron gets together and talk about different objectives that we had and things we want to make better for tomorrow. Other than that, we can find ourselves at any given time in the ground control station doing missions or resting before and after. We operate the plane using a two-man crew and a three-man crew. A two-man crew is used for basic missions, takeoff, landing, getting to place to place, and basic intelligence gathering missions. The commander, he's in charge of the mission. He talks to everyone that is outside the ground control station. And the operator, he physically moves the camera to make sure we see everything we want to see. Together, they work in sync to carry out the mission. The crew that operates the UAVs are all officers. The reasons for these are, the missions are complex and require lots of experience. The vehicles we fly are very expensive and the responsibility that we have on our shoulders is great. As a commander, I take much pride in my soldiers during sleepless nights and hard work, making the impossible possible, making sure everything comes out the best. Everyone here gives in everything they can for the mission. Our squadron is operational 24-7. The threat is real. We are ready for any and all missions. The citizens of Israel can sleep better at night knowing that our aircraft are always in the air, protecting them from any harm. These days, women play some of the most crucial roles in the IDF, including one of the most important of all, combat medics. I'm actually sitting right now in the back of an ambulance with Maya. Maya is a combat medic and a lone soldier from California. And Maya, the first question I want to ask you is, what about the decision to become a combat medic? Where'd that come from? So I knew I wanted to be a medic, and I thought that it would be more meaningful if I became a combat medic. And it was going to be hard because once you're in combat, it's hard to get medics course. But I really asked for it my whole training, and they gave it to me. So I was really lucky. Not everybody gets to be both. I want to hear about the life of a combat medic. What is day-to-day -day like? What are the challenges? There are a lot of challenges in being a combat medic, both mental and physical. Um, mental being you have to be able to be there for somebody at the lowest point of their life and be able to keep a clear head. Um, and then there's also challenges in being a lone soldier where everybody else goes home to their parents and they get meals and laundry. And when you go home, you have to make sure that all of that gets done by yourself and you basically just take care of yourself and it really helps you grow up. You're dealing with critical moments. It takes a lot of maturity. I want to hear about an experience that moved you as a combat medic. We got called to a car accident near the Jordanian border where there was a family of three that their car flipped over. We had to get there right away. And when we got there, um, we had to split up. Everything was happening really fast. And I was like with one injured person, like alone basically, because there was too, too much going on for everybody to be on one. And it was like the first moment where I really realized how important my job is and how life depends on what we do. And this is why we train. And what is it like down here on the Egyptian border? Uh, we're here on the Egyptian border. Um, we're in a base very remote. So we're here to answer any calls in the area. And it's a big area to cover. So every single day we go out and we guard the border for all night, basically. Our mission is to protect the people of the South and all of the people of Israel. Well, Maya, thank you so much for spending some time with us on FIDF Live and for hosting me in your ambulance.
First Sergeant Jonathan, thank you for being with us today. Give us some orientation. Where exactly are we right now? We are a mile away from the Gaza border. This is our outpost right here, and we are the first line of defense. So what is your mission being so close to the border? Is to maintain a strict day-to-day -day routine of missions. That means patrolling, scouting, and making sure no one crosses or tries to damage the border. Now this part of the country, it's well known, it's very hot, a lot of action. To what extent do you coordinate with other IDF forces in order to maintain the quiet on the border? We keep very, very close contact with any kind of troops and units that are around the border. We do that in order to make sure that we can see everything, get to everything, and basically keep the communities living around here safe. And what are some of the units that you and Nahal have worked with to keep the security uh, happening down here? We have the ground troops, we have the Air Force, and we have the intelligence. And the idea, of course, is that by coordinating between these different branches of the IDF, they work seamlessly together to keep this and all the other borders safe. I do want to ask you about our recent incidents down here, breaking dawn. What was that like for your platoon to be down here during that operation? During the last operation, we had to stay inside one of the, one of the communities nearby in order to make sure that if something happens in that area, we could easily jump into and help the situation. We talked about the mission. What is your specific role in the platoon? Well, my first role in the platoon is being a regular Fritz soldier, just like everyone else. Um, my second role is being a combat medic. My third job in the platoon is carrying equipment that I can't really tell you about right now. Lieutenant Eli, thank you for spending some time with us. Tell me, what is the mission of your battalion, 931, here, so close to the Gaza border? Our mission is to protect the, the civilian in the area that uh, in the range uh, of danger from Gaza. We're doing uh, different missions, including uh, being always on alert to any mission that pops out. Depends what the enemy is doing or uh, what the situation is. Uh, in Gaza right now. We had to cut our interview short with Lieutenant Eli because there was a hakpatsa. This is where they call all the soldiers on the base to come be ready for an imminent attack. Sometimes it's a drill, sometimes it's real, but now Lieutenant Eli is going to lead the procedure for this hakpatsa. Lieutenant Eli, we just heard the calls over the loudspeaker for the hakpatsa. Tell us what is happening, what exactly is going on? What we are seeing, the uh, a train of a uh, situation that the soldiers are in arrest and from uh, zero to 100 uh, percent they are going to to the fence and so they were theoretically sleeping right now and then within seconds have uh, to be sleeping eating and uh, leave uh, everything and go to the vehicle training operations happen a number of times each week really to keep them in top shape especially here on the border when you never know when the next attack is going to happen. You have a unique situation because you're so close to communities here on the border. What is your relationship like with the civilians who live so close to this base? Connection with the people in the kibbutzim that their job is to be there to be in charge of uh, all the security in the area. So uh, it's real close and uh, it's uh, almost daily because uh, in every emergency situation we work together. Recently we had uh, an operation that called uh, Breaking Dawn. During the operation our mission was uh, to destroy the enemy targets and uh, to respond to any threat that uh, might happen to, to these communities. And uh, also in a uh, in the Operation Breaking Dawn, uh, for example, there, there was hundreds of, uh, of missiles that uh, was fired 
on us, on this area, and uh, even if it's under fire, so uh, we continue to do our mission. When we are here, we know that uh, we are uh, responsible for the safety of the civilians in this area. It's a tremendous responsibility, and it happens because of the coordination. We see how it all comes together. Whether it's infantry instructors training the infantry soldiers here on the border, the UAV operators who send information to troops on the ground, that is the ultimate strength of the IDF, the teamwork. I'm Joel Chasnoff. Thank you so much for joining us on FIDF Live. We'll see you next time. Thank you.